studying this for centuries. The alcohol trees, and you're more than familiar with Newton's gravitational law, that everything, in a sense, succumbs to gravity. That is, for inanimate objects. Uh, this object will never jump from the table as will you or I. Um, we are capable of doing so much more because we actually move through gravity. We don't succumb to gravity, as does just an inanimate mass. Also, with this downward force as well, we, you and I, do not have fixed points of movement. We can go into uh, many details of joints and bones. However, I still produced with a height and weight factor. I have a kyphosis. I have femoral torsions. I can go on and on. Uh, I will not succumb to this earth as you or I do. And with that, we really looked over these key dynamics as we are looking at motion because of most of us are concerned with the forces or of the natures of gravity that we look at man's ability through load and lift. Uh, isolated muscle response. Yes, I can work on an isolated muscle response and get a, an improvement on either bulk mass or an atrophy, however you're looking at it. But those are not functional. When an infant is developing um, with this, they are not based off of a low and uh, low to mass muscle-based structure. So when we're looking at the key laws of physics within this, is we have to look at how humans and all living organisms interact with gravity. Again, not that we succumb to gravity, but we actually oppose gravity. All of our cognitive processes are based off of the opposition to gravity. Uh, when we have uh, failures in these systems, as in special needs, stroke, Parkinson, aging process that's going on, that's when the system starts to succumb to gravity. And it's those issues within succumbing to gravity rather than opposing to gravity, that's where the system failure starts to become very apparent and we are interacting with the body instead of the whole system and cognitive features. So when we're looking at how man actually opposes gravity and moves in throughout gravity, as if I walk down the hallway, I'm not saying don't fall. I'm actually moving within or through the force of gravity. Gravity is there. It's always apparent in my life, but I am not concerned with how I function in relationship to that. So it's with that that we start to really introduce uh, new mathematical formulas um, in opposing gravity. And to oppose gravity in any human life force uh, efficiently, we have to do that with rotation, which also to create rotation, we have those two opposing forces. So as all of us were to stand up at the moment, our feet, in a sense, go into the ground where our head goes away from us. We have that opposition, um, but the two opposing forces is what creates locomotion in our bodies. So again, the human development itself, and, and that's where one of my specialties is, because I've gone back to where movement begins, almost like the Big Bang Theory. It is true that any adult can oppose these principles, but that's what the adult functions. I can obviously lift my arm out without rotation. However, I can't get out of bed with that, uh, unless I'm uh, with Cirque du Soleil or, or some kind of amazing feat. But when a baby is actually born, and their first introduction to gravity is really through the breath, as they come out through a, a vaginal canal process or a C-section, but there will be deviations on the relationship to gravity, um, just even through the process of uh, delivery. But the first things that the baby does is only to respond to the stimuli of nature. Uh, I'm going to get into this more, but to look at just our, our topical senses versus our sub senses of balance and rotation, um, how we interact with gravity, temperature, pain, all of those things, um, those are what's crucial in, in early neonatal development. But those stimuli are what create um, how a human being is going to start responding. So if an infant cannot respond to gravity, again, has issues with breathing, um, you can almost calculate and guarantee that if they can't respond properly to gravity just in simple act of breathing, then that child will then have, most likely have issues walking down the hallway. 
because that is a higher complex issue of walking through gravity. So if I can't breathe well in gravity, then how am I going to walk well with gravity? So interventions need to be taken into consideration at an earlier development uh, stage, looking for the rotation and how that system is going to respond to gravity. So we look at these functions with high end performers and their ability to use these um, phenomena uh, at a higher rate and with perpetual motion. So not only can they oppose or run through gravity and do these functions or even leave the ground in feats that uh, you and I probably haven't practiced in a long time, but that they are able to um, use these forces um, to their uh, benefit. And tomorrow's lecture that I had on perpetual motion going down to a cellular level, um, uh, I'm representing more of this uh, information if you're interested. But we look at it again with inanimate objects, and, and it's quite obvious that they uh, cannot oppose gravity at any time, that they cannot consciously will themselves up off the table as you or I would. But they're also unable to create this rotation or perpetual motion. So their, their business is to succumb to gravity. Moving a movement and locomotion, um, again, adding to the complexities of the human bodies as we learn to organize ourselves around gravity, again, in opposition to. I'm not saying I'm never going to fall. However, that is not in my conscious form. I should never be concerned at any moment if I'm going to fall. If balance, heartbeat, breathing are in our conscious life force, then we're not learning at that moment. And you really can see these kind of principles show up in people uh, having special situations in their cognitive development. Um, which adds to pain, inflammation, health risk, and all their abilities to respond to their environment. So what I'm going to, or I'm starting to try to introduce more so system mechanics. To me, biomechanics, and, and I'm not going to get into that too much, um, is really uh, describing more of a cerebral palsy kind of response uh, that just a muscle contraction alone creates a movement. Well, again, um, and, and I'm going to talk about having uh, issues with movement, and you can be as strong as a horse, and it's not going to get you down the hallway. Um, that the muscle strength does not create the movement. The muscles really should be there to respond to the movement. Just as a gravity right now doesn't move me, it will move me if I interfere with my system and I go to fall. Yes, gravity will then take over. However, right now, gravity is not pushing me down the hallway. It's my organization around gravity and all living organisms around gravity which creates this movement. These principles will show up in a tree and even out to our galaxy. So again, when we're talking about something like cerebral palsy and, and uh, Hudson here, um, he has a strength, he has a muscle contraction, but it's lack of opposing the two forces within these two systems that impedes with his locomotion and starts affecting his body's development as well as the structural development issues due to his muscle contractions and, and this condition, as well as the fact that he cannot oppose two forces to create the locomotion that's needed. So his system is constantly organizing on how he comes to gravity, not on how he opposes gravity. So it creates a completely different nervous system in his body that he is coming to the earth uh, at a much harder force. So I don't know if any of you have had a, a surgery and so forth. That there was a gentleman that spoke yesterday of, uh, that talked about having um, issues where the lapse in body movement, what it creates not only in pain, but how it creates just a difficulty in learning how to go back to oppose a gravity um, in a functional basis uh, that you don't think about. So um, I, I did not have animation on this, but I, I, I had it online. But if you actually look at any kind of even plant place in a slow motion, you will see as it breaks through the earth that this rotation does come out with flowers, all of that comes into minor forms of rotation, but they are apparent in all old living organisms and how they grow. And when those, uh, we can say lack of water, environment, all of those things, with a tree just are swaying in the wind, 
that's what helps draw the water up into the system and to nourish. And when their rotation um, gets impeded with the and their opposition to gravity, then they, they die as well, and they have uh, issues with their organization. So from birth, we will learn that not only the opposition to gravity is part of our stimulus and our, our cognitive formation, but just how we respond to every movement will have this opposition into uh, their forces. And we can assist in these kind of forces as well through um, touch manipulation, how we apply stimuli to a new nervous system um, as they learn to, to work with these two forces. Once they learn how to work within gravitational field, that's when we can start manipulating and go into higher adult functions of load and lift. These are things we are going to lift and crank up. Um, however, uh, a newborn baby or, or early development, if you see a baby, let's say, where a parent probably says, oh, I'm holding a the ball, they're only two months old. Not a good thing because it takes away the weight transfer and how they're opposing gravity. If you notice when a baby, as they, they play with something, they take it into their system. When they are in a static pose and now all of that, immediately you're going to start showing warning flags in development. So with that, all of our life forces depend on this opposition to gravity and how we relate to it. Um, surgery, uh, neuropathies, all of these things that come into aging, the way it affects how we respond to gravity, start affecting our life force. And we can actually manipulate these forces for a healthier uh, way of living. You can really see how these kind of forces, uh, when taken away from the human body, start to affect us uh, almost immediately. Uh, when we are in a microgravity situation, uh, astronauts cannot oppose two forces. So they lose all other development at that state. Uh, they can't stand anymore, they can't crawl, they can't lie down. They can assimilate these kind of sensations, but they actually lose the sensation of opposing gravity. And this is why I believe that the body breaks down so substantially in outer space and has all of these things. It's been really been considered that it's due to uh, uh, lack of muscle or muscle atrophy. But our muscles actually develop and play with that opposition to gravity. That's where our muscle health comes from. Not necessarily, again, where we're working on a load lift system constantly for how we move and how we develop uh, as human beings. Um, so I believe that if an astronaut actually worked on uh, teasing the brain and opposing gravity in outer space uh, with different methods, that, that they would have a much longer uh, span that they can handle in space. But you really see, uh, too, when they come out of the capsule, how they just drop to the ground. That, that the brain has really forgotten how to uh, work with gravity. So you, again, you see the heart complications. But what's really interesting, and also uh, what I found, is when a baby is in a, a the, the fetal or the womb, that's when the body's meant to expand in all directions. They're not meant to learn from stimuli per se until they start coming out and dealing with gravity. Um, but how the spine actually elongates in outer space. And I think the brain is confused putting it back into a womb like behavior. And we are not meant to do really any kind of cognitive functions in an expansion mode. So our evolution is going to continue really when we start looking at how we manipulate the opposition to gravity and uh, how we work within this field, whether uh, for all of us, how we're going from my functions to anti-aging to childhood development issues, <coughs> to look at how the health of the system and how it relates to gravity and use those kind of uh, evaluations in the, your systems that you're working on gives a clearer picture to where the brain is and the cognitive development and where we're going to go with it. So we do need future studies. Uh, again, um, I've been trying to get just the, the mathematical complications of showing this. We do know that Newton's, again, force mass times acceleration for gravity. Also that gravitational force is 14.7 pounds per square inch. We don't feel that anymore. 
when we lift our arms up, we are not feeling that we're actually going against gravity. When you're looking at a newborn, those spasms, those movements, they're actually playing with that gravitational force that we now just assimilated into our system. And we really need to rethink when I'm going down the hallway, how I'm going through gravity versus how I'm just going or succumbing to those forces of nature and to use that um, in a much more higher uh, defined rate and look at how the human body can develop and more, um, more efficiently. Thank you very much.